Hello, welcome to our second edition of our REDCap Advanced User Series. Uh, today we'll be talking about data structure with REDCap. I'm talking about active design rather than passive. Um, and basically we're going to focus on how to think about your final data structure when building your REDCap database. So um, I'm able to bring these classes to you, um, this web series to you via the advanced CTR. Our mission is to support clinical and translational research in Rhode Island through awards and funding, research resources and services, and professional development opportunities. Part of these development opportunities include education. So we're actually trying to teach REDCap as a means to improve infrastructure and how people do research throughout the state. So hopefully um, people will get something out of this presentation. Okay, some background. Um, data structure is a particularly boring topic, um, but it's actually very critical to most successful research projects. Um, data structure for any project should be actively designed with intent to match study goals, analysis plans, and specific testable hypotheses. REDCap does not decide your, red, your data structure for you. This is very, very important. Um, usually you work with a statistician or a person doing your analysis up front with database design, and this is critical to ensure your data structure will um, match the types of analysis being done. Um, the important part of this is that actually different types of analyses require different data structures. So you really want to work with the person doing your analysis up front to make sure that the way you design your database is conducive to the analysis that you need. Uh, many REDCap users overlook this step and end up with accidental data structures that may or may end up working for your project. So you really want to be um, actively designing your database as opposed to passively letting REDCap features decide on your data structure. Okay, so we're going to clarify some terms that we'll be talking about today. So uh, first I'll start with cross-sectional study design. This basically implies any data that's collected once per person. So lots of data sets end up looking like this. Um, oftentimes though we are looking at um, numerous bits of data per person um, and sometimes over time as well. So if I talk about repeated measure study design, all this really means is any data that's collected more than once for a single person, um, often when collecting data on a percent over time, but not necessarily. So an example where I'm not collecting data on someone over time might be heart rate for one person under two different exercise conditions. Um, but that being said, we're oftentimes very interested in collecting data on one person over time. This more specifically is referred to as a longitudinal study design. Um, it's got a specific type, uh, it's a specific type of repeated measure study where data is collected numerous times for one participant over time. An example of this might be weight measurement for a single person over time. So we follow them over six months and we might collect their um, weight or weight loss numerous times during that period. Other important terms are more related to data structure. So um, if I talk about data structure or data format, what I'm referring to is how the rows and columns of your data set are organized to handle your specific study design. The types of data structure we'll discuss today are simple data structure, wide format, and long format. So we'll actually talk about examples in Excel and how those databases would then be built inside of REDCap. So an example of a simple data structure a basic structure is usually suited for cross-sectional study designs. It's the simplest structure. We have one row per person and one column per outcome. So in this example here, we've got record ID, um, and each record ID is associated with one person and one outcome. In this case, it's red blood cell count um, or date of the red blood cell count. We might be interested in both of those things in this example. So I'm going to show you a quick example of what that might look like inside REDCap. So we're back over inside of REDCap. So this is actually looking under our data exports reports and stats. So I've already uploaded this data inside of REDCap. But let's take a look at what the actual study design might look like. So a very simple study if I'm inside my online designer. I only have a single instrument in this example. If I click inside this, we see we have a variable for record ID, MRN, date of RBC, first name, last name, diagnosis, and RBC. So each of these variable names represents a column inside our database. And then record ID helps us differentiate the different people inside of our database. So very, very simple. Um, once again, look, going over and looking at our data's um, exports, reports, and stats, we view that report. We'll see this is our data set. We have one row per person um, with their outcomes uh, associated with that person. Okay. So we're actually going to start with wide format data structures. This is one way to handle repeated events for your study. When I talk about wide format, I mean one row per person of data. 
we handle repeat data using repeat columns um, over time. So I'll show you actually what an example of that look, would look like inside Excel. Here we are inside Excel, make this a little bit bigger. So we have a column for record IDs. Notice we only have one row per person here. But now we, have, we go out to the right hand side, we see we actually have measures that we've repeatedly gathered. So we have the red, red blood cell count and then the date of the red blood, red blood cell count have been repeated. So instead, uh, so to, to handle data of the structure, we basically have um, one column per each event per each outcome. So we have two columns for red blood cell count to represent two different times and two different columns for date RB, for RBCs, um, one and two. So very simple structure still. We have just one row per person as we said, but now we have our data handled on numerous, numerous data points per person across different columns. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like inside of our REDCap project. Over here. So it's a database I've already built to, take, uh, to make an example of this. So we'll start by looking um, in our online designer. So notice we still only have a single instrument in here. In our single instrument, it looks just like our last instrument actually. We have a variable for record ID, which we have to have, a variable for MRN, first name, last name, diagnosis. Now we actually have separate variables for date of RBC1, date of RBC2, variable RBC1, variable RBC2. So all we've done to accommodate this data over time is simply add new variables with the different time represented. Um, so very, very simple in this example. If we go over and look at what our data exports reports and stats looks like. It looks just like the example I showed you inside our presentation. So we still have one row per person and then our repeat examples are shown across uh, different columns here. So let's talk about the pros and cons of wide format data structure. Back over to our presentation. So uh, pros of a wide format data structure is you can, it works well with certain types of study designs. Pre-post designs where you measure um, before and after an intervention, it works super well for that. It also works well for repeatability of a measure. So let's say you had a new device you were using to measure your RBC level or count in an individual. You wanted to compare the new device to the old device. So you basically have um, one column representing the gold standard and one column of data representing the new device. So it works really, really well in those examples. There are, however, limitations to wide format data structure. Um, time, in this case, doesn't end up in its own discrete column because time ends up being a modifier of each column. We don't have its, our own discrete column for time. This can be limiting when it comes to analysis. Also, because our, our outcomes live in numerous columns, where our RBC1 and RBC2 lived in two separate columns, it can be very hard to summarize our outcomes over time, and that can be a huge limitation to our analysis also. Finally, the big part of this that's important to note is it gets clunky with many outcomes over many events. Um, as we need to generate a new variable or column each time we have a new event, that can get very slow. Especially when we have um, type of study designs where we have many, many repeat outcomes, this can get very, very um, uh, hard to, to handle very quickly. So it's just something we wanted to talk about. So now let's talk about repeated events in a long format data structure. So what I mean by long format data structure, I mean numerous rows per person, one column per outcome. So I'll show you what this looks like inside Excel. Here's our example, example inside of Excel. So now this looks different than our previous um, Excel examples we've looked at. We have a column for record ID. Now notice that our record ID actually repeats. We have two rows per, per person in, in these instances. If we look out now to the right, we have one column for our date of RBC and our actual RBC count. And if we look, we now have a new column that's called encounter or event. So now the fact that we have a person that repeats across rows is differentiated by this event. So now for event one, we have one value. For event two, for the same person, we have a different value. Um, there's a lot of benefits to this format of data structure. Um, we now have a whole discrete column for time and a whole discrete column for our outcomes. This makes many types of analysis much easier. Um, this is actually very similar to how data is stored in our EMR medical record systems um, and a lot of other um, formal data structures as well. So if I go back over to my presentation. Pros, now we have a whole column, as I said, for time or encounter as a discrete variable in its own column. 
our outcomes live in one column instead of numerous, so this will make it much easier to summarize our outcomes over time. Um, this is the underlying concept that is used to hold data in our medical record systems, as I just said. To add another visit for the same person only requires the addition of one new row of data, data rather than many new columns that we needed in the wide format. So it's a much faster way to add data to a database, and it's much more flexible. Um, it's the gold standard for data collection, and as a result, REDCap is designed to work best with it. So the scheduling mo module requires longitudinal, actually, and it can make more, long the longitudinal format um, can make more complicated survey designs a lot easier. So let's go over to REDCap and take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to walk you through our project setup um, for a long longitudinal format project. So unlike before, go over to our edit instruments. We now actually have two data entry forms in this project as opposed to one. We have one solely dedicated to demographics. This is what we've seen before. We've got our record ID, MRN, first name, last name, and diagnosis. If we now go look, we have a second instrument that's dedicated to the RBC. These are our repeat outcomes. So we've got date of RBC and then RBC itself. Now the question becomes, well, how do we handle the time component of this database? How do we make it long format? So at the very top here of our main project settings, we have longitudinal data collection with defined events. This is already turned on for us. Once this feature is turned on, this whole box down here shows up, define your events, designate instruments for my events, or turn, define my events. In this case, we're only going to have two events, so it's a very simple design. And then we have to tell REDCap when we're collecting what data. So in our example, we have an event one where we're collecting our demographics, and then um, also our RBC. And then event two, we're collecting our RBC count again. So a uh, great example of, of why this structure is so useful is we wouldn't have to, in a longitudinal study, we wouldn't want to have to collect demographics numerous times. So it's nice to have a form dedicated to variables we only collect once, and we can designate to REDCap that we're only collecting this form with demographics in it one time, then we have to never worry about it again. So now we'll go over and look at our um, data exports reports and stats. See what this looks like. Now this looks a lot like the data set we had in our Excel example. So once again, we have a column for event name. This column gets made for you once you use the longitudinal module. So when you define your events in the longitudinal module, this column gets made for you. So you see now this is a whole new column we talked about with time in it. And then we have our date of RBC and then um, the RBC value. So now we're going to go take a look at what it looks like when we actually enter data into this, this system as opposed to uploading as we've talked about it so far. Go over to add and edit records. We're going to add a new record here. Um, so now we're entering a new person to our system. So it takes us to our record, uh, record homepage uh, when we first enter somebody. So this is a new record ID for person um, 7. So we're going to go into our demographics form for event 1 first. So now we're inside our demographics form for event 1. Gonna make up some numbers here. There's some data. Notice as I'm entering this data, it's at it's telling us we're adding new record ID seven. If we look over at the left hand side, we're in person um, seven's record. We're also in event one, and for event one, we have two data collection instruments. We've got demographics and RBC. So at this point in time. I can either save and exit the form, or I can save and go to the next form because I have one more form in this event to fill out. So I'm going to save and go to the next form. So it naturally takes me to the next form that I might need to fill out. So for this case, um, we're going to enter some values for this. And we're going to complete now because there are no more forms to fill out at this event. Um, it doesn't give me the opportunity to save and go to the next form. So it, I have to save and exit. And it naturally stops my data entry at the end of my event. So where this becomes important for um, data entries, it helps control quality. So I am naturally stopped at the end of event one, so I couldn't accidentally enter data for event two unless I navigated to it purposefully. Um, so I'll go back out to event two now. Now notice I'm still in record ID seven. Um, this is Joe Smith, which I've, I've used one of the other features to show that to me, the custom record label. Notice now I'm in event name event two. So if I look at the left hand side, I'm in record ID seven. For Joe Smith, I'm in event two. Notice that now I only have one instrument to fill out. And I will save and exit form because I have no more forms to go to to fill out. 
In this case now we'll go over and look at our data X reports and stats. We'll view our report. And here at the very bottom now we have Joe Smith. This looks just like everybody else. Notice we have all his data filled in and we have two different RBC values for him. Great. So we'll just talk a quick summary about what we talked about today. A reminder that data structure or format is how the rows and columns of your data set are organized to handle your study design. Data structure for any project should be actively designed with the intent to match study goals, analysis plans, and specific testable hypotheses. REDCap does not decide your structure for you. It should be an active process you decide well before you get to REDCap. The types of data structure we discussed are simple data structure, one row per person, one column per outcome. Wide format data, one row per person, repeat columns for, um, for each outcome. And then long format data, numerous rows per person, one column per outcome, one column dedicated to event or time. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you got something out of our presentation and uh, hopefully you have some, some luck with deciding on your data structure for your next project.